going for those. So welcome to everyone who's here. Um, this is our first of a two-part series, so don't miss the, the, the second part coming in December. This is, good. this is one, how to market your local market and promote your local church. There's one coming up in December that's going to be how to market your own business. So that may apply to some of you in, in your, well, non-church life, in, in your businesses and things like that. So do keep um, your eyes open for that one. Um, I'm hearing an echo somewhere. I don't know where that is. Anyway, um, I'll start with a word of prayer, and then we'll introduce... Um, We'll introduce our, our panelists. Um, Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the privilege we have to um, meet together around the country in this forum. It's a very important subject, increasingly important in the times in which we live. And we thank you, Lord, for the um, our presenters today, thank you, Lord, that they have dedicated their gifts and their talents um, in, in their lives to, 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 to this um, digital marketing and that they're passionate about using these skills and talents in the church as well. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them, be with each one of them as they present, and be with those of us here who are listening, that as we hear what is shared, that we would be able to think of ways through the influence of your spirit to blend these into the ministry that we do. So, Lord, we thank you, and we ask for your Spirit's presence to be here in our midst. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we've got three presenters today. We have Andre, Nori, and Chisha. Um, do you guys want to just introduce yourself quickly before we get into it? Andre first. Cool, yeah. Hi, I'm Andre. I've um, been working in marketing, specifically digital marketing, for about the last 10 years. Um, it was actually Nori who got me into it up there. Um, currently working in Birmingham for a digital marketing agency <clears throat> specializing in creative and social media. Excellent. Nori, so you got him into that. How did that go? Uh, how did that happen? How did that happen? Um, I started, so like Andre, 10 years ago um, in, in marketing, doing a placement. I was at a place, Andre had not long finished university. We were talking and there was an opportunity at the place where I was working. And I, I said, you know, would you be interested? And, you know, I had to make them employ him and because it was my brother and I'm only joking he, he was he was he blew them away and um and yeah no no we were working together for some time actually quite a few years wasn't it until until yeah. he left me and moved to Birmingham um for, yeah yeah, but, yeah. how would you say my wife poached me away yeah exactly um but yeah I've been I've been working specifically in um in digital marketing for around 10 years now um and work at an agency in, in Manchester Thank you. Thank you. And Chisha, last one. Yes. So, uh, yeah, my name is Chisha. I've um, been working in marketing for about uh, eight, nine years. I studied business and marketing at uni. Um, over the years, been involved in sports marketing. I used to work for the uh, national team and, and the British Basket League. And then just in more recent times uh, for one of our um, national news brands. Um, and I'm part of their marketing team. So, um, yeah, I think that's a little bit about me. Thank you. All very humble guys. Their portfolio is a lot bigger than what they've just said. But um, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm going to hand over to Icon now. She's going to host the, 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 the presentation tonight, at least, at least as we get started in terms of the, 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 the format that we're doing. We're going to ask questions and answer. Um, so questions are going to be posed and they're going to answer them. Uh, these are questions that they've put together. If you guys have questions throughout the presentation, I believe, um, is it wait, wait till the end or, or, or raise hand during the presentation? Yeah, raise hand during the presentation. So, raise a hand during the presentation. Yeah. If you have questions along the way that are relevant to what's being talked about, feel free to um, use either physically like raise your hand so we can see or use the raise hand function. Or alternatively, you can also just type it into the chat and we'll see that and get your question answered. So we love for it to be as interactive as possible mm -hmm. because that's the way it will be most helpful for all of us. So um, without further ado, marketing our church, what, um, what, where are we at right now? Like what's our current condition? You wanna tell us the good news or the bad news? <laughs> 
um, uh, I mean, where are we at right now? Is is a is a, We've been we've been talking about this as, as we've been catching up um, ahead of this uh, ahead of this uh, session. And and it's funny when we talk about our experiences of being marketed to specifically by um, the church. Um, generally, some of you might be able to relate to you know a WhatsApp uh, message um, of some kind. Usually, depending on what age category it's from, will vary on the creative skills, the creative thinking. Um, you know, there might be some like you mentioned before, some roses, or you know, it might have some audio, some funny music behind it. Um, somebody singing, maybe uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about—the things that come through on a Friday at sunset. That's those crazy. Happy Sabbath ones. Yeah, those ones. So um, much blinking. So it, it, uh, yeah, that you know. Um, so, so when people are, are generally promoting things or marketing something, it can it can come come across in that guys. Um, you know, pre-lockdown, there's 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 the old um, printing off like a thousand uh, leaflets. And you know, sister so and so, or brother so and so, say, trying to rally the youth on, um, getting them to stay behind after after potluck or whatever it might be to go outside and, and hand some leaflets out. Um, so when we when we take a step back and and that's just looking at it from a local church level, and we're not talking about conference at the minute, we're talking just local church level when we're talking about events that are happening, etc. Um, that can be some of the methods that are used. Obviously, some churches are are doing a really good job from uh, building their social profiles online. Um, and using you know YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever else it might be to get that message out there. But I think on the most part, pre-lockdown, and I think lockdowns had to force churches into to venturing into digital. Um, as a ch- as churches, we've been afraid, I guess, of, of going digital. Um, maybe afraid might be the wrong word, but not actually put the emphasis into it or realize its full potential. Yeah, I I'd completely agree with that. One of the things from from my perspective, my experiences, it feels a little aimless. It feels as if we've been told or informed we need to do something and therefore go and do it without the appreciation for what's actually involved in making sure it's done well. It's more of a tick box exercise rather than actually working to achieve an objective. So it's, we have an event, we put out the poster, people will somehow know about it now. And that's kind of where we go. That's the sum total of what we do. And like for me, it just feels as if we're scratching the surface of what we could really be achieving. Mm. Okay. I, th- I think one of the things that we were discussing earlier is so that we start this off all off on the same page is actually understanding what, what is marketing? Because when we were discussing before, like, Nuri, what, what was it that you threw out when we said what is marketing? Yeah, so marketing, I guess, it, for me, boiling it down is, is, is a, a business or somebody that has a, a product or a service or an event of some kind that they, they want to get in front of a particular type of person with a particular type of message. Yeah, um, yeah. and to be honest, I, I feel like Nori's uh, covered, uh, well, really what I would have said is just, um, again, you've got a product or service and you're, you're doing your best um, to get that in front of me, the consumer, or whoever it, uh, or, or a rele- relevant audience, yeah. um, and putting everything into doing that in, on it on the most basic level. Mm-hmm. So, just for the um, rounding everything up to make sure we're on the same page, what we're actually saying when we mean marketing is marketing is just a communication. In its simplest terms, marketing is a communication. So, when we're talking to you now, we're actually marketing to you. We're using our speech, we're using our body language to be able to put across or advertise to you our point of view or our experiences. So when, when you think about it, everything you do from your body language to your, the way you dress to what you write on social media, everything is marketing. And I think that's what we need to understand when we say how to market your church, you as an individual, as well as what you use are marketing. You are a marketing function. And I think that that's the sum total. So when we're talking about, when we say marketing throughout this presentation or throughout this discussion, we mean a communication. Mm. Exactly. So if we've focused on what we have then, what we've been marketed to, I'm going to put you on the spot, guys. What, what's good? What's bad? What's the good, the bad, the ugly? You point it out for everyone to answer? Or for oh, us? for you, for you, for you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think... Um, 
one of the things that, I mean, we discuss, and to be honest, I think everyone here, if you ask the question, you'd, you'd probably say sometimes you feel like that communication that you've received from the church has, it feels like there's a lack of care put into that communication, a lack of thought, a lack of intention. Um, and so you're seeing something and going, well, I don't, I'm not, I, to be honest, I'm not interested. I'm, I, I, I don't want to be part of that because actually I can, I can already see that people probably don't even care that it, by the communications that they're sharing with me. It just shows a lack of, um, a lack of care and thought um, and intention. And I think that's a word that at the moment, I think in 2020 is really important that what we're putting out has some form of intentional, purposeful uh, meaning. Um, and so I think, I th and so therefore straight away I start thinking about some of the comms that I've received and w when we were talking about this again and Nuri's kind of touched on it pff, not great and obviously we haven't brought any actual examples because you know um yeah I think it's good for us maybe to share it rather than sh show you can't be calling out churches <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but um but yeah I think that's that's something that um yeah there's, there's there's yeah not a lot not enough thought and care has been put into the communications which is a shame um and i think that's the one of the first things that comes to mind just when you when you think about that question um yeah i think just building on that point and um, generally with 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 when you like andre was talking about communication and and you, you need to have the the person who you're trying to communicate to in mind mm -hmm. um and quite often or not, where what would be good to start to see is 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 churches thinking from a, a perspective of who is it I'm trying to communicate to? Is this is this for the members or is this for people outside of the church? Um, and if it's for people outside of the church, what type of people are we aiming to get in? Is it students? Is it this? Is it that? And gearing mm. your 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 communication towards that user. Mm. Yes, there are going to be times where it's going to be open to everyone, and you're going to try and find a way, but. I think you know a challenge would be to think a bit creatively and go, okay, how can we tweak this message for this event or this program or this um, service we're doing to to actually cater and, and grab the attention of people, um, rather than just going, okay, here's a here's a flat PDF poster, and, and we're going to just get that in front of as many people as possible. So you know that that can that can work and it does work, um, but your chances of success, you know, we talk about engagement rates in marketing, we talk about you know conversion rates and all these sort of things. They're, they're metrics that we're always challenged on to, to make sure that we're making a budget work as hard as possible for a client. And I think if we took that mindset into the church and we started to think, okay, for this event or this, this thing we're trying to market, how do we get as much from it as possible? Um, so a, an example, instead of printing off 200,000 leaflets, you know, spending a bit of money on, on just doing a bit of a, maybe an Instagram story that you promote to Christians in your area. On, on Instagram and, and, and potentially Facebook and, and a personal message saying, hey, I'd really like to invite you to our service this weekend. It's taking part on Friday. And that's more personal rather than just a, maybe a statue of Nebuchadnezzar that that person's not gonna be able to relate to. Um, the service could still be on you know, Daniel and, and, and Revelation and prophecy, but the invite is I've got something really special to share with you mm. specifically this weekend. Mm. Um, click here for more details. Oh, that's I good. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, could I just quickly add on Nuri's point? He's talking about the audience. Another kind of example, and this I think would hit home with many of you listening, is you know we'll have a revival um, campaign um, at the church, and a revival typically is for the members, and it's an internal focused event. But you'll hear the constant communication um, will be go and go and invite your friends, tell your friends, tell them to come. So again, what's, we're, we're getting our messaging confused. And that's, I think one of the main premises of this whole conversation is audience, audience, audience. And that's why I just wanted to add that just to give an, a real life example of sometimes how, again, we're um, missing the mark um, uh, with our communications. Uh, I think that's one that maybe some of us can understand. So one of the things that the church can do better is to understand the audience. Are there other things, um, other things that the church can do better? We should be doing better market ourselves, market ourselves. Yeah. Um, churches and the thing is, so when we do marketing, we always have, no matter what agency, what business you work with, you have a clear 
template or process that you'll work through. And it's called, it's basically the customer journey. You can bolt parts in, take parts out, but it's all pretty much the same. And the first point of this is, how do you know what you want to say if you don't know who you're trying to speak to? And that, that's the thing, when, when you say an icon, you're like the audience, the audience is the key thing, the, the main thing here. It's not so much about what you want to say, it's what the audience wants to hear. And there's a, there's a really big difference in marketing where we say you can broadcast, which is where you put out or say what you want to say, or you can communicate and communicate is two way. It requires you to speak, but also to listen. And so now for everyone who's on here, think about when we've all been to an event, we've, or we've all helped organize an event, or we've seen a video of an event. And when you think about it, how many times did you see a poster or something about that event but there was, there was nothing else. It was just a, a poster from sister so-and-so sent round going, I'll oh, come to this event and it's tomorrow. And you've not had a chance to find out more. It's not built your interest. That poster may not have been tailored to you. It may not have hit your needs. You may be busy. It might've been really long. And so what we, we work through a whole process and to give an example of why understanding your audience is so important is because I, I, was, I saw this, um, I was doing some work on a creation seminar the other day, and I saw a poster that said that this creation seminar had over 18 hours of scientific evidence. First thing I, thought, I don't have 18 hours to go through this. So I instantly locked up, instantly. And I'm going, so they, but they said what they wanted to say. They, they didn't know what I wanted. And I saw another DVD. And this DVD, firstly, I don't own a single DVD player in my whole house anymore. Like, so firstly, the DVD can't work for me. And secondly, it was saying this DVD is available in 37 languages. And I'm like, that's amazing. I only speak one. So therefore, the other 36 languages are irrelevant. Why are you trying to convince me to watch this with something that doesn't make any sense to me? And th this is when it comes back to you. Whenever any church, whenever anybody at all is asking us to do anything in marketing, and like Noreen Shish will know this, we're given a brief by a client. Mm. And the first question we ask back is, who are we speaking to? What do they care about? What's their motivation? And so we work through what's called, and some of you may have heard it, some of you may not, it's called the, um, like a sales funnel, which goes from awareness, where we first introduce you to a topic, then we have to then engage you with some form of ongoing communication to let you know a bit more about it. So now we're convincing you. And then we hit you with the call to action by telling you what we then want you to do, which will be the conversion point. But what we seem to do as a church is go straight to conversion, go, we, we, we need you to come to this event right now. I'm going, you haven't told me what it's about. You haven't told me whether it's relevant. I, I know no details. How many times have we been to like a youth day and had to ask is, um, is what's it called is is lunch provided like i'm saying straight when you go to a church event you're always looking for lunch Let, let's be real and i know a lot of you can testify to that so it's understanding the audience and understanding their needs and their desires so i just you're gonna jump in with something bro yeah and, and i think we when you just heard Dre talking about um a journey um you can actually relate this to some of you would have heard this and I actually for the first time heard about this at Peace, um, uh, the NEC's uh, School of Evangelism and uh, I suppose a bit of a plug there isn't it um, <laughs> but Christ, Christ's method alone this year um, for Ministry of Healing Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people hear the journey the saviour mingled with men, uh, with men as one who desired their good he showed his sympathy for them. He ministered to their needs and he won their confidence. And then he bade them follow me. And so actually it's funny because as we were talking about this before, we actually, as, as this uh, uh, example came to mind, we actually said, wait a minute, we can, we can actually see some of the things that we are doing in a day on a day-to-day -day basis actually in uh, Christ's method alone. Um, so yeah, just something again to relate this back to um, uh, our purpose as well. Because he... I like that because God, God actually ministered to where their needs were. He ministered to them before he then tried to convert them. Because at the end of the day, that's showing a difference. God was communicating. He was learning about them. He was understanding them, which is what marketing is about. You need to understand who you're trying to reach 
before you even start anything. So this is why it's very difficult when and a lot of you guys have, as youth leaders or churches will all know this. You've got a tight deadline and it's a case of you've got to get this communication out. You've got to do this. You've got to get it on social media. But there's a research piece that needs to take part at the start. Mm. And if you take the time to do the research into the way the people speak, into what they care about, what their needs are right now, what's actually the current barrier to them coming to your event, coming to your church, engaging with your people. It might be that they already know somebody who went to that church and had a bad experience. You have to learn that to be able to then structure what you're going to even say. All this takes place before you even start anything at all. That's step one in your planning, is understanding the audience. And questions. Like, yeah. are, is there a, a list of these questions somewhere or is it just a matter of like trying to think of all the angles and all the all of those questions to ask as part of trying to understand your audience? Like, what's the best way to, to start understanding your audience? <laughs> um, I'll jump in. There, there a, a few ways you can do this. Uh, so... First of all, your actual audience in terms of, let's say you're a, a youth leader in your church. Um, so so I, was, I was youth leader at Manchester South for two years. And the first thing we did as a team was um, do a survey. So we put together a survey. I can't remember how many questions it was, just using SurveyMonkey. Free tool, uploaded uh, uh, some questions and asked the youth what they wanted to see. Or, or would like to see and didn't like um, with how things were going uh, previously and then how they'd like to see things going in the future. So that went from events in terms of what they'd like in terms of if, if they want more Bible studies um, or it, it varied from lots of it. What was the reasons they came to AYS? Why didn't they come to AYS? So we could get under the skin and it's anonymous as well. So they don't need to declare who they are in any way. We just asked for their age. And again, um the reason why we asked for their age is so that we could have a representative sample so that actually we're not got people that are you know 50 45 or whatever else in in the in the survey when we know that as a youth team we're going to be catering to a specific age group um and that allowed us to be uh, well i hope during that time a bit more relevant because we were actually fulfilling and making plans based on what that that feedback was um in terms of that feedback that was given so that's in terms of reaching like audiences within um, your church setting. You could also do like focus groups. You could get like 10, 50, uh, five, eight people together in a room uh, with a set of topics and talk through it with them. Someone taking notes um, and implement off the back of that. Another way, and that's, that's obviously in church, but I don't think we um, do enough of this. And, and specifically, we didn't as a, as a youth team at the time, but is find out how you could support your community. Um, as well so actually we come up with ideas and go oh this would be really good to do let's 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 get let's get that out there and promote it to people but that might not be what they want and you know andre trisha have mentioned that already is like we can we can put things out based on what we think and, and go oh, okay let's let's put that in front of people but again it's it's not how they want to be communicated to and probably something that's not of interest to them so you know there are ways that you could do that in terms of speaking to your local community center um your local authority whoever it might be you could have conversations with them to find out what service what 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 would be of help to the community um or what their needs are and then structure your your programs or uh, things that you do throughout the year uh, based on that uh, just just quickly to add on to what nuri said um again this is a, a basic but actually when you do that because some of us some of you here have done that but then it's do we actually follow up on that work that we do? Because often, I, I think many of us aren't, um, uh, like we, we've done surveys before, we've done some maybe basic uh, research of our local area, maybe a couple of the streets, even if it's been a couple of the streets, we then get all those sheets back and then we still probably decide to do what we have in our heads that we want to do. And actually we don't actually act on those surveys, that research, that understanding that we've now found out about our local community. Um, 
whether it be from the from the council who've gone and spoke to and we found out what they what they would what they need help with and and what's what the needs are of their community or whether it's been from the door to door stuff or the focus groups that you can do i don't i think we we rarely hear of maybe churches doing focus groups that's something that could be done but it's then actually doing uh, uh, responding to 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 that um those focus groups those surveys because i think that sometimes is actually the issue um sometimes we do do the work but we don't actually follow up on an action on that um, i see dre's come off mute so jump in <laughs> yeah no, it's all good no because following what you're saying about are we following up this is a challenge to any church right so there's a thing in marketing called nps which is net promoter score and that's a percentage of an audience that would recommend you your service or your product to someone else and it's usually a score from zero to ten and what happens is if you score, so you literally just ask a question and give a sliding scale, which is how likely are you to recommend, so in this context, this church to your friend? And then people can answer it. And if you get zero to six, it's classed as a detractor. So that's, that's not good. Seven and eight is classed as passive. You don't care either way. Nine or 10 are your active promoters. And what, they, what that will do is, it will give you a benchmark as to how likely your congregation, and you can, you can split this by different age. A survey monkey allows you to do it as well, because um, we do our agency with our staff, completely anonymous, for us to benchmark how we're performing in different areas. And so we will find, you could do it as a church and say, how likely are you to recommend our church? And you will see where you are. Now, to give you an idea, in the legal um, industry, most people end up with like minus 50 or something they're really bad um if you're something like a luxury sports car you could end up with a net promoter score of about 80 something and that's really good and like a luxury holiday will be up there as well um a lot of brands i used to work at an agency ages ago where their net promoter score was 17 but what they did is they started to address the issues in the survey and did this every six months to gauge how they were then improving. And this, this is what it's all about. It's not being shy of our failures, but then using those to instigate the improvements. But what we do is we, as Shisha was saying, we do things, but then we're not actually monitoring or continuing that process afterwards. And that's been the issue with all comms at the moment is when, when we're putting things out, it's called cool. that event's done, tick on to the next. We have to, if you really wanna engage with your, your audience, with your community, it's an ongoing piece. We can't just do it as a, as a one-off at all. You've got to continue with it. So yeah, I don't know if you guys have anything else you wanna to add to that. That's not a <laughs> mm. So, so. And tell me again, like, what are some practical ways a church could like kind of figure that sort of thing out and monitor it? Okay. Speech, I think this one's over to you, my friend. You're on mute, man. Or was this was this me? Yeah, this was number five. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. So um, I think one of the, 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 the so I, I mean, I've got here, yeah, how do we get from knowing what our audience needs uh, to then creating communications um, that can reach them is actually just starting firstly to well plan. Um, and again, that sounds uh, yeah, obviously, but actually plan, sit down, think, plan. Um, and then, and then obviously, as we've kind of touched on already, but start to define objectives and uh, what you're hoping to achieve um you know are you wanting are you wanting to engage with local council local businesses raise the profile of the church do you want to have x amount of people like think about what your objectives then are and then obviously that's when we start thinking about um furthermore the customer journey um and yeah i think but i can't emphasize enough the planning part because i think one of the things we talked about at the beginning was um, in regards to um, uh, what well, I think at the beginning was this idea of we'll do something, we'll plan something like Wednesday, create a poster Thursday, um, like share it Thursday night, guys, come to the event uh, Sabbath. Um, and again, uh, very unintentionally 
uh, planned, just very careless. Um, and as I'm even thinking about this, and, and as we're talking about this, like how much do I actually care about what, again, comes back to this point of how much do I care about what I'm doing? Um, you know, am I wanting to give my best for God? Or am I just trying to just get by? And if you're wanting to get by, the results will will correspond as well in the, in in that regard, in regards to your engagement with your local community, um, seeing people come to your uh, your programs, um, and and everything else. So, um, I think um, planning, obviously, uh, you and you might have, so example, you might have maybe a content plan, or again, if you're looking at this customer journey, you might have a plan from uh, from the start of the year to the end of the year. Um, and then you might have an idea of how you're going to achieve things month by month. But I think it's just really important to to think about the planning piece because sometimes, yeah, we just, we then just scattergun and mm. um, yeah. So I, I think that's a starting point, but I think Dre can... can I'm going to give a bit of a uh, shout out to Pastor Adam Ramden on this one, right? So on, on the youth team, Adam was particularly good at this and I'm hoping he doesn't get a big head from this, but he was. So what, what ended up happening was he would sit there at the beginning of every new year and he would lay out exactly what the theme and the plan was for the year. What each of those years would build on each other to work towards his end goal. So one of those could be, you know, like setting the, and I'm making this up just hypothetical. One of those could just be, making sure that there's a fundamental knowledge of doctrine. Then it could just be then how you take that doctrine and preach it to the world. And then it's in how you can set everything was working towards something. Mm. And when we're going back to the concept of a funnel, if you're ever posed with how to promote your church, think about this. Since we've been on lockdown, since the churches haven't been as active in the community as they could have been before, have we heard any complaints from the community? Because if we haven't, it shows that what we were doing before was not actually achieving anything mm. in the community. So we'll be we just doing things for the sake of doing it. So if we were to set, say, right, this is Nothing ground zero, this is, that's the issue. If you are not missed, there's a problem. And to give an example, um, I, a client of mine was the Royal Mint that makes the country's coins. And I got a text literally this week from, sorry, last week from one of the marketing managers going, wait till you see what we're about to do this weekend and give me your feedback. And I had to message them today, actually, going, I didn't see anything. What, what was this whole big thing? They'd released a new coin based around diversity, talking about how diversity built Britain, but you didn't see any of their marketing anywhere. No, nothing whatsoever. And the reason being, they had the idea of making a coin they had no idea whether it would work because they hadn't done the planning and the research. It was a knee jerk reaction and they spent a lot on it. But, but the, these are the things that, that happen. And so if we're doing this from a church perspective, we need to be clear on what's our objective, what's our goal. Are we trying to reach the community? Okay, if we're reaching the community, that's our objective. Therefore, we need to go out and understand who our community is. And as Nuri was saying, that could have been the surveys, you can do Facebook polls, Instagram stories um, are a great one to get feedback from and never underestimate simple word of mouth. If any of your friends have ever left church, why? If you've ever invited your friend to church and they've found an excuse, why? The, the, these are all the things that we need to be asking. And then off the back of that, we need to then find out what are the, we call them barriers and drivers in marketing. What's the barrier? So I'm not interested, imagine this, if I was to say to Nuri right now, buy a new car, would you buy a new car? W would you, Nuri? Are you giving me the money? <laughs> no. <laughs> would you buy a new car? No, no, I don't know. But if a tree fell on your car and you had no car and you had to get to work, and oh, now yeah, I say yeah. buy a new car, would you? Definitely, yeah, definitely. Something was a trigger that made Nuri move from... I'm not interested to now I'm interested. And that's the way it is with the church. There is a barrier between the community and us. And it could be, it could be along the lines of, I've had a bad experience at that church before, or I didn't even know there was a church there, or I don't know what the denomination is. It might be a bit cultish. I don't know. We've got to figure out what those barriers are before we then know what's going to be the trigger to help them overcome it. 
And so if I know the reason why no would never buy a car is because he lacks money or because a person will come to church because they didn't know it was there, the simple thing would be, okay, I need to tell you that I'm here. Or if you've had a bad experience before, I need to listen to you to talk through what that bad experience was. And so once you understand that, you can then structure the comms accordingly. And it's not even just one piece. And this is what we can't emphasize enough. Mm-hmm. In marketing, when Chisha was talking about customer journey, we layer up multiple messages at the same time because not every message is relevant to a particular person. And this comes back to, um, we were doing a, have you guys ever heard of a concept of, I'm going to type in marketing by donuts. And marketing by donuts is basically explaining the concept of um, what different marketing, um, if I can find it now, yeah, of what different marketing platforms are actually for. And so this is how you can best communicate with people. So to give an example, Facebook would be, I like donuts. People just broadcast the random message. Instagram, here's a picture of my donut. Twitter, I'm eating a donut because Twitter's about narrating your life. Snapchat, my donut will disappear in five seconds. YouTube, here's a video of me eating my donut. And LinkedIn is, my skills include donut eating. So the concept of what we're trying to get across here is that when you're marketing, don't assume one communication can work. Don't use the same content on every platform because the reason why people use those platforms varies. And it's incredibly important. And so to give you an example of how important this is, YouTube, when it first came out and was doing advertising, would allow you to do 30 minute ads, almost like it was TV. And over time, I don't know how they figured this out, but they came out and said that human beings had the attention span shorter than a goldfish. A goldfish was nine seconds, a human being was eight. So they got rid of all the long form content and they started to make it shorter. And that's why Twitter came out. Twitter was a certain amount of content. And this, the fact of the matter is, people's, the way people consume communications changes. The way in which platforms are used to communicate changes. Because I wouldn't go onto YouTube if I'm going to write a status, just a one-off status. But I wouldn't go on to Facebook to watch a one-hour video. Each platform has its purpose, which I suppose kind of leads us into when we're talking about um, like when we're trying to uh, map out our communications then, how do we make that engaging? I think was the, the next person that we wanted to look at. And I know that this was one point that Nuri and I discussed and Chish and I discussed when we were talking about, I would focus on this, but if I was to put this out to you guys, what would be the number one thing that you would expect from a community? And this is to anyone. Number one thing you would expect from a marketing communication from the church. That's to you as well, Nuri and Chisha. What's the number one thing? That's to anyone. I'm interested, I'm interested to know what the people think. <laughs> Come on, people, speak to us. Repeat it again. Pardon, sorry? Say, say the question one more time, please. So when we're talking about an engaging communication from church, what's the number one thing that you would expect in order for you to determine that it's engaging or is going to catch your attention? What do you look for? What's the... Sorry, I think we lost you there, Sam. All right, no, it's then. What would be the number one thing that you'd look for to make it engaging? And I first out to Aiko and Adam as well. What would engage you? Yeah, so um, for me, like the, it, it, I think it being done properly would, would, would engage me. Um, and what I mean by, by properly is that like, it's intentional, it's been thought about, it's personal. Um, that's like I said that, that at the start, like you know, someone stopping and, and speaking to you specifically. So do you know how you get those ads where they're skippable and they say, "Hey, hey, you don't skip." It kind of forces you not to skip. It's like when someone says, "Hi, how are you doing?" I'd like to personally do da da da. Um, so yeah, something being done properly and intentional. Um, I think for me. Okay. Yeah. 
I think for me, the, like if the communication is engaging for me, it's about something I'm already interested in. Okay. Just the so, subject matter is like something I already want to know about. Okay, so in order for something to be engaging, it means they've got to produce something for you where they have an idea of what you're interested in already. Yeah. Which goes back to our earlier points of that preparation and that understanding of the audience is key. But then also, if I just said, here's a, so can you give me a topic of something you're interested in, Ico? So something within the local church that would be interesting for you. Within the local church, ooh, I don't know. Okay, okay, within just anything in, in general. life, like sourdough yeah. bread is something I'm interested in. Okay, sourdough bread. So if I was to say, um, here's a poster, and I just write sourdough bread on it, is that going to catch your attention? Initially. Okay. I, what, like I would get to look, and like yeah. read more. So there, would be there no you more. go. Yeah. And this comes back to what we we're talking about is you've got to be able to catch your attention and then feed down that funnel to a call to action. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing. And I remember using an example of myself and I preached years and years ago, a particular, it was my first preaching appointment. And it was at a youth day and I preached on the stage. And when I came down, the pastor said, that was a really powerful sermon. There was one thing missing, an appeal. That's what marketing is like. You can put in all the hard work, and if you don't put in a call to action by letting people know what to do next or what you expect next, that hard work is wasted because they're sat there going, I, I don't really know what to do. And do you know what? Tomorrow, she's put that. She wants all the information quickly at a glance so you can make an informed decision. Now, if I was to challenge that and say that, that is exactly it, Certain people require more levels of information. Back to the DVD example, which has 36 languages. Like, it is way too much. But, um, but, if you, us, but if you only spoke Arabic, or if you had your, you know, your dad that spoke Arabic only, then maybe that would grab you. True, true, it would. And I think this is coming back to like, what was their objective? And this is what we're talking about is when we talk about our processes, understanding your audience, understanding what they need to communicate with them. Then it's actually having an ongoing communication. So you're understanding their needs and you're fulfilling it. So I might not, if Adam was to ask me to do something for like, say, say you want me to preach this Sabbath, I couldn't just stand up and preach. I'd have to go away and I'd have to study. I would have to um, know my subject matter. There's always an element of work that needs to take place in order to enable you to then execute. And that, that's the key point here is in church at the moment, what tends to happen a lot is because of the time frame, as Chisha was saying, we've got to remember it's for God. We are not putting our all into everything because we create a post, we put it out and we think job's done. We have to have the ongoing communication by actually going, how do we hold ourselves accountable but did that communication achieve the intended result? Yeah. And in order to do that, you, as we were talking about earlier, you have to quantify at the start for what your, what your actual results are. Which kind of leads nicely onto Eddie's question, actually. <laughs> so I, I just saw that in, in there. Um, do any of you guys, uh, have you seen the, Eddie's question in the chat? Let's just we're read the question out. out. Um, the question is from Eddie, does anyone have any experience in investing in digital advertising versus flyers for a church event? And if so, how did you do it? How did it end up? How difficult was it to convince the rest of the team to in invest in digital versus paper advertising? Well, for me personally, so I've, I've done this. Um, and I find that, and the guys here can testify, especially now because in digital, um, it depends on who you're trying to reach. It depends on the age demographic. So I find that if you are the older generation, they like something tangible that you could hand, that they can give to their friend, they can take out their bag or keep in their Bible and they can show people things. But you tend to find that it has a very short shelf life. So when you use it, unless people are going to share that information instantly, 
it always ends up on the floor or it gets forgotten about or left in the back of their car. Whereas digital communications live on. And the good thing about digital communications is you can keep on um, revamping them, putting out a new creative execution, amending something on it without, and to be honest, if you know a graphic designer, you can get that done for cheap or there are free tools where you can get it done. Whereas if you've done a huge print run on these leaflets, you can't amend them. And that's the problem. So for me, um, it's definitely, I would always err with, especially with the youth nowadays, it's all about the um, digital aspect. Because we looked at a stat um, when we were preparing for this, that 51% of the world's population is on social media. It was 3.6 billion people are on social media. And the amount of people who have access to the internet, 80% of those are on social media. It's, some, it's a crazy stat like that. So there is no communication method out there that can reach as many people as you can digitally at the moment. Yeah. But once again, it all comes back to what your objective is. I, I think as well, like I, Eddie, I, I haven't, I haven't um, experienced a church specifically investing in, in digital advertising rather than, um, than print like flyers and stuff. But I, it has been talked about. Um, what, one thing I would say is, is if you go onto your um, local church website, who, who is that what you would expect from a website today? Mm -hmm. Like uh, when you go onto that website, do you feel compelled to attend that church? Is it giving you the information that you would like? And I think, you know, I remember specifically talking to someone, um, a colleague of mine um, who had moved to the area and, you know, we started talking and found out he was a Christian and um, I actually invited him to our church um, and everything else. But, you know, he, he, he came in uh, maybe a week or two later and just said, oh, yeah, I've started going to this other church in, uh, in, in, in town, in Manchester. And I was like, oh, how did you come across it? And he went, I went on their website and I, I, I like the look of the website. I went on a few other people's websites and I didn't like it, but their website I really liked. He made a decision to go to a particular church based on their website. Um, you know, things like Google's like ratings and reviews, like, do we pay attention? Because there's some websites, uh, churches I've seen where, People have complained about the cars parking outside on their on their yeah. church web uh, church <laughs> Google. You know, keeping my mindful eye on all these things, um, I think is very very important. And I think we need to as a as a we'll, we'll invest a lot of money in um, cameras and video and technology within the church for the audio, which is is right to do. But that's catering to members. Um, we need to also think about how we are portrayed outside of that. So our website, if we need to create an app, and what the purpose of that app would be. Um, how it looks on mobile, how we're adjusting to the time. So like there's a particular church that I've, uh, their website I've been on and, you know, it's very interactive. It's, it's really easy in terms of what they're asking you to do. What Andre was mentioning before about that call to action, you know, do what, when do you want, what do you want to do? Do you want to have a Bible study? Do you want this? Do you want that? Or do you want to access the, and they've revamped their website for instead of it being services to be an online services. So you very quickly can understand when their online service happens. They've got their video in the background on their homepage is actually really relatable because it's people on Zoom talking and someone preaching and singing. And it's like straight away, I'm like, yeah, you, you're, you're with it. You, you, I can relate to this. This is what I'm experiencing now. Um, so, yeah, I think taking a look at the, the, the sort of fundamental things, um, not just like the, the church building, but actually how it's represented outside of that in the digital space mm. is important. Yeah, just, just to add on and kind of touching on your follow up question, Eddie. Um, sometimes I don't think we necessarily actually need to um, move on from print per se um, and actually we can use the combination of the two um, and especially if you're thinking about it at least these guys will know but you'll be thinking about it in the maybe perspective of it of a campaign so example we we have a campaign uh, at work to um, to launch we're going to launch a podcast and from X time, from uh, September to the end of October, is that going to be our campaign period for launch and everything else that will follow afterwards? And obviously to, to therefore raise awareness, we're going to use multiple ways to reach um, the different audiences that we have. And actually maybe to bring it closer to home, I'm talking in a different language, let me bring it closer to home. When we, we had, a, um, I think Eddie actually, you, you probably might know of, we did a gospel music cafe. Um, in the local community at one of the local restaurants. Um, this was before COVID when people could be in person. And we did both flyers, again, made, made sure they were well produced, 
good quality hard not flimsy paper things that could just go off and fly away but actually someone could look at that and go straight away okay this is this looks like it could be something quality at the same time we're doing some so we put some of our youth by john social media spend and obviously word of mouth and everything else and actually on the day we had five people that came from our local community that came with so two of them i think actually came with the flyer and said oh i've had this flyer through my door da, 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 da. and they were uh, there's a couple that were in their late 50s um, someone who's slightly younger who came with a child so i think we don't have to completely say actually no print is um print is out of date because the reality is there's still a generation that is 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 living and well that engages with print and I can also t tell you that from working in news that print isn't going away yet <laughs> just from the numbers that we'll, we'll not, I'll know but yeah it's not going away yet mm. you know that, that's Sorry actually a really good point because um, when we're doing um, a work for a particular client and they have pharmacists all over the UK and whenever they're trying to do a particular product launch they'll have a massive digital push where they'll put out all their communications on social media, they'll do billboard advertising in the local area, all of this. But from a local guerrilla marketing tactic, they do always do what's called DMs, like direct mails. They'll do door drops yes. and go and put these leaflets through. Because, and the way that you can actually check whether there's any success from off the back of this, is you put a call to action on there that's spe specific for that. So if you come in with one of these leaflets, we will have a Steps to Christ book available for you, or we'll have this available for you or that. And you can start to almost track back the success of that versus the digital by putting different, um, I'd say different communications or different um, reasons to Vision. come. Vision. Exactly, different incentives. And one, back to the question of um, how difficult is it to move people from that older generation without alienating them is the, a lot of um, the older generation, I can speak for my grandma specifically, she swears by 3ABN and Hope Channel. That, that's her. I, I asked, she had a TV in her bedroom and I asked her the other day about it. And she goes, it's only there for religious purposes. As if I was going to judge her that she had a TV in her bedroom. <laughs> and <laughs> the reality is they're used to this. And so it, we, we were discussing earlier, no intuition myself is, when we create these events or these church things, we could actually then create recordings of them that are then uploaded onto one of the services that they stream to their TVs. Or we can then send 30 second snippets to other people, or we could create um, like podcasting, like people can just listen to it and get it on radio channels. We can put modern communications onto what we call older media, but it's progressing because radio is what became podcasts, what became streaming. So the jump isn't that big a jump. And it's looking at things which aren't such a big change for them by going, no, you will no longer use this technology. You will use this. Find a happy medium. So we do, um, that's where we had out of home advertising. Rather than having the big billboards, we call them six sheets, which are the bus posters or 48 sheets, the massive street style billboards. The next thing was they created digital screens. It's the same thing that people are used to, but now you can communicate digitally. And then you can share the same creative then onto social media. And what it's doing is it's slowly, without us even realizing, I would say indoctrinating us, educating or progressing us from being used to the old media to the new one. And people don't even realize they're being progressed along an evolution in technology. Just because no one said it outright. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um... Next question, we've got, we got a question coming up on the practical tools that I know you guys are, um, those guys um, who, who are on the call, they're gonna find that really, really kind of bring it all together. But before that, how do you ensure that what you do is engaging? A couple of tips on, you've talked a lot about engaging, engaging. What are some things you can do to make sure it's engaging? It comes back to what Ico was talking about, is understanding what the person wants. So we, um, we use a tool, there's a free tool, anyone can use it, it's called Google Trends. Um, you can go on and now, you can take a look and what you can do within that is it tells you the interest in a topic anywhere in the country or in the world. You can just select the country that you want, you can select what the topic is, you can select the date range you want to look over. 
And what it will do is it will tell you how much interest there is. But when you scroll down to the bottom, it will also tell you breakout trends or the top topics which you can communicate. So whatever you then put out, it's always going to be trending. And that, that's what's the interesting thing. To make it engaging, it has to be real. And it has to be something relevant to where a person is now. So we did an example where we ran through Google Trends and um, the topic of Bible study. And we looked at what the breakout topics were. And the biggest one since lockdown was online Bible study. And the top topic, if I can find that now, of what people are actually looking at, the related topic was the Methodist church. So when people are looking for online Bible studies, the Methodist church are the one who are doing it. And straight away, they've realized what a trend is and jumped on it straight away. And that's how you get people engaged is because you, and Google said this when they first created their search engine, they said, we want to create content or provide content that answers a question before it's needed to be asked. So we know you so well, we're going to preemptively provide you what we know you need. So we knew straight away when lockdown happened, everything's going online. And you'll notice certain, like credit to the NEC, credit to certain churches, they jumped on it. They provided content, they were there. And then there were other churches that got left behind. And then on top of this, you can then start to find out what are people resonating with? What's getting the most amount of views? What's getting the most drop off? And you start to then produce more content that is getting the best results. You can't make something engaging without first understanding or analyzing what worked historically. And it's never producing the same format of content. You've got, you've got to mix it up. Um, like Spotify, creating a gospel Spotify playlist, you know, things like this that could appeal to where different people are. You can then create um, webinars, different podcasts, digital, social media, YouTube live. These are all the different things that you can use where it comes back to the, the heart of it is make sure you tap into what is current and real right now. Just, just to add on to what Dre has said, just before you come in, Sam, Please, Sam. Um, and, 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 and this idea of even sometimes testing um, and, and then responding to sometimes the engagement levels of content that you are uh, sharing. And if we're just thinking about, let's say, maybe social media at this moment, I, I'll give an example with our uh, uh, Chelmsford SCA, youth, the youth group that I'm attached to. There were two things and something that for the next few months, actually, we're going to put more emphasis on that. When we would put those, po when we would post throwbacks of when we've been together as youth, and they've see and, and you can see that 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 the, the 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 excitement, the happiness of when we were together in person. Those 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 uh the engagement with those posts through the roof. Two testimonies. We did this. We have this thing called uh, my story. And similarly, when we're sharing testimonies, it's just a picture of the person. And then the copy below is literally just their, them telling a an aspect of real life, a real life experience um, and a testimony of theirs. And we were noticing that every time we were, po we were posting these testimonies, the engagement levels compared to some of our other posts so were, were much higher. So, okay, people are impacted by the testimonies. We need to share more testimonies, real life testimonies. Um, so it's just an example and that and, and that's trying again just bringing it down to the level of maybe your local church maybe again the content that you're producing um, and and again testing once you see something works okay maybe we need to do more of that again on a basic level that's a really good point uh, oh, sorry so moving on to the next question, what, what practical tools can people use to help them um, enhance what they're doing? I mean, some people may be tech savvy, but there may be people that aren't. And so what variety of tools could you recommend to those um, who are watching now and, and later on as well? Um, I suppose it splits into different sections, really. So in terms of finding out content topics, we, we created a, a list here. So we mentioned Google Trends before. Um, Twitter, Twitter is always a good one. Twitter tells you um, the top trending topics every single day of what's taking place. Not all of it will be relevant, but you know what more people are talking about on that specific day. And I always look at um, the similarities where 
Jesus always said, like, when you're looking through the Bible, like, you should be able to see his character in almost like every word. You should be able to see his love in everything that you view. And so when I'm looking at these topic trends, like God has something related to literally everything we're going through in life right now. If we were to just put some focus on like what's trending now, like the uncertainty around uh, Brexit, the BLM movement, there's, you know, all these different things that are happening, police brutality. You can always find something in the Bible that can appeal to one of those audiences. And so um, YouTube make recommendations as well. Like the social media platforms are geared up towards producing content that's very similar to what you've engaged with in the past. And so what happens is you will, you will be exposed to a bubble where you only see things relevant to you. If you want to see what's relevant to other people, de delete your history, delete your cache, and you'll be able to then find out what's truly out there. And you start to see different suggested topics, different things that are important to people. Don't know if you guys have any other examples. Um, yeah, I think building on that, like what we talked about before from a understanding your audience perspective, we mentioned SurveyMonkey. Um, so that's a, a free tool that you can use. I think there's a link already in the chat, all right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so thank you, Aiko, for posting that. So that's in there. Um, Instagram um, surveys, Facebook surveys, there are things that you could do, obviously, um, from there. Um, so you, there's, there's a lot of things you could do from a, understanding your audience perspective. It's just a case of putting a bit of effort into it. And, and like we said before, a lot of it can be free as long as you can get it in front of um, the right people in terms of your audience that you're trying to trying to reach and there are creative ways that you can do that if you're trying to reach out to students then you could speak to the president of the university or a specific society and and get that survey posted on whatever website blog or um, whatsapp group or whatever else to get people to fill that out um, from a creative standpoint um, in the past we've we've used um, like paid people to design posters and, and creative work but there are also tools which I, I specifically use called Canva. Now, now I am not a creative person at all. Mm. Um, I can't draw. I'm not not illustrating anyway. But you know, Canva. I was I was able to actually use that tool and, and put together some okay. I would say okay um, sort of communications within that. So Canva is a good one. Um, very easy to use. Drag and drop type format, um, which can can help you. Um, a few other ones that you got out there. Uh, Typerama for social media. Typerama allows you to put text over images. So if you want to continue with that WhatsApp spamming that people are doing, that's you one because you can get your lovely happy Sabbath images banging over WhatsApp. Uh, <laughs> another one. Now I've not used this, but I've heard people use it before. Blender. Blender does basic video animation. But if you just want to get things out there quickly, um, there, there are other elements out there as well. So we use, and to be honest, one of the best tools you can use, and unfortunately it will be paid if your church wants to put some budget into it, is Facebook Business Manager. Facebook Business Manager, Instagram Business Manager. Even if you're, you just create an account and you can always pretend you're going to put budget in, but don't associate a credit card and you can still use some of the tools. That allows you to see what people are talking about. It allows you to see how many people in a geographic area are interested in a particular topic. So whenever a client comes to us, they will say, we have X amount of money to spend advertising this product in this location. And we will go into business manager and we will say, I'm interested in 18 to 24 year olds, interested in the gospel in Birmingham. And with that, it will go, there are, nine million people you can speak to who are interested in this and straight away you can start and it'll tell you how well they will engage as well so we've not even set live any ads or paid anything but it's giving us some insights into how well a particular topic in a location will be received and i think this is all coming down to understanding the community in which we live because a lot of the communication we we go out with is the same communication we use inside church so we need to be clear on who we want to reach um, do you have anything that you wanted to throw in there, Trisha? No, I was actually just going to say um, apps. Just go, just go on app, your app store, search what exactly you might need. Uh, maybe you need a video editor, 
search video editor, you will find, and again, it sounds really like um, basic, but actually, if you just, I mean, I, I we, we um, for store Instagram stories, example, I need something that looks, is useful. So a Google uh, app store, so I use one that's called Lyft. Now, some of the, uh, some of it is, is paid, but example, I, I want things to look, you to look good and we want our um our, our social media person for our youth wants our our content to look good so some of it is is paid and and i think on this point about paid i know we kind of touched on it but sometimes it's worth it um because even it, all the diy stuff is great and it's very like especially if you can spend time practicing um you can obviously get very good but there's people that you know, even within our churches that are experts and they can design, they can create content. So um, uh, sometimes it is also worthwhile uh, making that investment or put some budget towards um, that as well. Mm. And the last one's on our list were Infogram, which allows you to make um, quick infographics. Um, and then Snapper, S-N-A-P-P-A, which is basically just short snappy messaging templates. And when you, what I would recommend is don't just go on, take the templates and just use them in its current format. I would advocate taking a look at the content of people on social media or these other platforms that you actually engage with and then replicating that. So mm. one of the new trending things that we were discussing before was mm. the 15 second prayer. Mm. It taps into the trend that they know people are very time poor. They know that within lockdown, people are going to be scrolling through Instagram, just browsing and wasting hours upon hours. And so one of the trending things happening currently in the US is the 15 second prayer, which is where someone films or run up to the screen, all panic, panic, it's like, stop, stop. And so you stop scrolling, like, well, why? And they go, I just want to pray for you for 15 seconds. And it's a very personal thing because it's just you and this person praying for you. And these things are taking off at the moment because it's a simple thing of, it goes back to being real and sharing those experiences when Chish was talking about the testimonies, but they've put it in a format, which is from Instagram, straight away, just 15 second prayer with a little timer at the top. And these are what these tools enable you to do. And it's tapping into what, what's the thing that people always say, we try to stop them in the street or you try to talk to them or witness to them. I haven't got any time. I'm busy. This bypasses that because they understand what, what, the barriers are and they turn the barrier into a trigger because everyone's got 15 seconds. Mm. Last one, headliner. YouTube, uh, so it, maybe it's a YouTube sermon. It is uh, any, any, any some kind of long form audio, you put it into headliner and then you can create the kind of sound wave graphics. Mm. You know the sound wave graphics that you'll see like a podcast use. Um, so that app is called Headliner. Um, a great app as well. So um, definitely encourage the use of Headliner. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's many others, many, many others, millions. <laughs> so yeah, I think um, what that ends up with, we've got a list of content topics that you can come up with and then the actual execution point because there's so many times people get turned off because what you tried to communicate wasn't communicated in a way that they could understand or receive it. it wasn't easy to digest. And some of these tools just enable you to just put a little bit of finesse onto what we produce, but allow us to do it quickly. And also more importantly, which I find with a lot of church budgets for free. Everybody likes free. Yeah. <laughs> it's always a thing. Cause when we were going through this, it's always a big discussion. Um, like, so my area, I know is area, specifically digital marketing, where clients will actually do the paid versions of everything. So they'll come in and they'll, they'll spend the money. And so there's always, it's almost as if, and I'll be honest, when it comes to local church with the budgets, et cetera, almost like paying for something seems a bit of a dirty concept. It's like, well, if we can do it for free, we'll do it for free. And sometimes, no, no use an example, and I'll put him on the spot here, is he said, if we were to take all the money we would spend on the event, and put all that money in just feeding people, which one would demonstrate Christ or communicate Christ's values more? And it's, it's looking at what your objective is and then working out how you can achieve it. And it doesn't always have to be the same old, same old. In marketing, 
one of the things that if any member of our team ever says, like instantly the out is, well, this is the way it's always been done. It's the worst thing you can ever say in marketing because you will lose a client if you produce the same thing you did the year before. Even if what the client requires is exactly the same, times have progressed, audiences have progressed, needs, wants, and desires have progressed. And if your understanding of them hasn't progressed, they will fire you instantly. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, so the last question would be, what would your key takeaway message be? So that was here. Um, key takeaway message is, is, for me, would be spend some time thinking about how you could understand your audience better um, and who it is you want to be intentional about communicating to. After you've done that, have a think about um, what channels, what methods are you going to use specifically to to communicate to those to those people, whether that's digital, whether that's leaflets, however that's however you're going to do that, and then what journey do you want to take that person on? Um, so being intentional about okay, if they do come to this or they do come here, what would I then do with the, the try to get them onto or or in front of next, um, and think about that journey that someone's going to be going through, and then I'd say be consistent. Um, mm. you know, be consistent with what it is that you're putting out. And uh, we, we all know time is very precious. You know, Dre just mentioned then about, you know, we're all stuck for time a lot of the time. Um, but you don't, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's like if there's content that exists, you know, the sermon on Sabbath, um, you know, that w what's happening with that sermon? Is it being uploaded to YouTube? If not, why not? Um, can somebody edit that sermon down uh, as long as it's not too long into a short, snappy 30 second, 45 second video that you could have put on Instagram. Um, how, how could it be, how could it feature on your website? Um, so yeah, think about, you know, using what you've got in place at the minute and be, and be consistent with what it is that you're putting out on a, uh, with the content that, that, that you're producing. Um, and then do it to a good standard. Um, you know, like, like, like Dre said, and, and Trisha as well, in, in, in the workplace, if we were to put out poor marketing, then the, the client will leave straight away. Mm -hmm. We won't be, we won't, we wouldn't expect to be working with them. We'd almost be like, yeah, we did do a good job there. I don't think we should be uh, continuing. Um, so it, it should be the same, especially when we're doing something for God is like, actually, let, let's do it properly. And if it means we have to spend a bit of money, if we can do it for free or use someone's resources, brilliant. If not, how can we do this to the, and make this uh, work as hard as possible? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think the only thing to add on to that is hold yourself accountable because nobody is going, to, if you're going to be doing these things, you need to know that what you did worked. So you have, when you start it out, say from the beginning, what are you going to judge yourself on in terms of finding out if this worked? So if it's a case of, I need to fill an auditorium and hold yourself accountable to that. Did your marketing fill the auditorium? Did you put in that effort and that time to be able to do it? And if it didn't, go back and understand what went wrong. Because one of the main points you learn in marketing is leave your ego at the door. You can't refuse to look at whether something was successful or not because you're scared that it wasn't. If it wasn't, be humble enough to look at what didn't work so that either you can improve it next time or pass that on to the next person so they avoid your mistakes. But hold ourselves accountable. Nothing to add, to be honest. I was really, the main point I was just going to say is take your communications seriously. Take the marketing that you're, you're planning to do, you're thinking of doing, you're doing. Take it seriously, do it properly and do it well. And then, you know, just do some of the basics, right? Be consistent. Um, if you look at something, you wouldn't be interested in it. Don't put it out. You know, some of these things that we'll just still do. Just, just be intentional, be intentional. But I think what Nori and Dre said is succinctly covers um, some of the key takeaways for today. All right. Thank you, guys. Excellent, excellent um, points you shared. Thank you for, um, yeah, breadth of knowledge, breadth of um, advice. Are there any other questions to those who are watching here that haven't been raised by them or haven't been answered in the chat? Are there any other questions at this time?
you can either type them in the chat or if you want to um, ask them yourself, that's fine. So I just want to ask you guys if there's any other questions that you have that you want to ask right now. To either type or raise your hand. Oh, Sam, Sam, I see you. Are you, you guys do a do you guys do a consultancy for churches and for conferences? <laughs> checking in just a few, few three consult for conferences or anything like that in the world. I don't know. I'm just just checking in. Maybe you should maybe you should consider it. <laughs> because someone the dragon's den type scenario there. <laughs> um, but do you know what that kind of leads nicely as Adam was talking into the the next one, which is about taking um, an individual's business or idea through the whole process so we can actually work with people within the church to take it from just an idea to actually getting live. Mm. Um, because I think it's very easy for us to communicate these things because we've been doing it for the last 10 years and we can drop so much on that the reality is after people leave, they remember 30 seconds. But when you put it into practice, it becomes real. Mm, mm, mm. I think that would lead quite nicely into um, the second stage of this. I've got a question. So I, I was taking a lot of notes about some of the things you mentioned about social media. Mm -hmm. On our pages, we follow other churches and likewise those churches follow us. And I'm guessing we want to reach churches, but predominantly we want to reach people who are not in church. How do you go about, go about getting followers? who are not in church, like, is there a tool? Because, I mean, there's one thing getting all the stuff out there, but if I'm following Manchester South and they're following me and that's predominantly my followers, mm -hmm. I'm just putting out content for other churches to see, but there's not really any way for me to gain the followers who are non-church members. How do I do that? That, that, that is bang on to be perfect. Yeah. This is what we were discussing earlier. Um, I'll give, a, I'll give a snapshot and then the guys can jump in on that one. Is um, One of the elements is collaborations. One of the biggest ways to grow social media is collaborations. Identify who it is that has, and remember the collaboration is not so much about the person you're collaborating with. It's about the audience that that collaboration allows you to access. And that, that's a key thing to remember because people go, that person's amazing. I want to work with them. Well, let's not forget the only reason why you want to work with them is because you want to communicate something to their audience. And so when there's, um, I was doing a, a subject topic on mentorship and empowerment a few weeks ago, and there's a guy out there who does this called Jay Shetty. And he's got a couple million YouTube subscribers. And what we found is when he was creating his YouTube content, he was tagging in other prolific speakers like Gary Vaynerchuk, Simon Sinek, because what happens is that when people are searching for their content, his content can show. So start to create the partnership. So rather than say partnering with Manchester South, partner with someone. So if you want to reach people outside, who's doing prison ministries? Who's doing community days? Who's out there preaching in the city center? Like get that content on and never underestimate for using Instagram as an example, hashtags. It's a free thing you can do on your Instagram. You can switch your Instagram page to what's called a creator account and just migrates everything across. But what it allows you to do is as long as you have more than I believe it's a hundred followers, it gives you insight metrics on your content and it will tell you how many people are viewing your content from other people or from specific hashtags. And what you do is go onto Instagram, check out the hashtag. So if, is for your church and you're doing a youth retreat if you type in like hashtag youth retreat or hashtag youth what type of content's out there what hashtags are they using who are they what are they saying incorporate that into your own content and over time you start to change the instagram algorithm so it starts to show your content to a wider reach and there's another marketing element called a thunderclap and a thunderclap is a strategy where but it used to actually be a platform but it's a strategy where when you go live with a piece of content get as many people to share it as much as possible because in Instagram, the algorithms are waiting in the first 20 minutes. So you need as many comments, shares, interactions in the first 20 minutes because then, you know when you're on Instagram, you press the, um, the magnifying glass to look at the Discover page, that's how you get into there. Make sure you get as many people. So if, if you put something live, drop, drop us a text and be like, can you, can you share this? Put it in your stories and tag me. And that, sh that increases your reach and games the algorithm. Yeah, uh, yeah, 
to be honest, uh, Dre's mentioned a couple of, a good couple of points. It's a really good question. Um, for, I mean, there's there's numerous things that you can do. But I think one of the things again is is who's your is your audience again other is it other Adventists or is it? And I think I'll give it. I think I was talking about this with Andre and Nuri. Um, we have a youth account, let's say, and we're just sharing on our story SDA memes. Like that's that's great for. Uh, let's say from my my personal account or but if i'm trying to reach people like sda means aren't of any use right one two now you're thinking about okay who am i you just said i'm trying to reach people that aren't uh let's say my, my fellow so first and foremost let your youth ask your youth to share content so you've posted some content on your page ask them to share that goes on their story if, it, if we're just thinking about instagram or if it's twitter which wherever it is ask them to reshare because then that's broadening the reach when you do sometimes a social media campaign so example you might decide to boost a post um one thing i've seen i've always seen regularly happen is that the people that start coming to our page to see the content if they've obviously been interested they then decide to follow that's one of the ways i've seen some pages then start to uh, start to increase in having non-sdas follow um, another one is engage with your local businesses and local um, example, there'll be numerous restaurants, numerous businesses in the area that will be on Instagram. Follow them. They'll follow you back. Then maybe one day you might tag them in something that's in, that's interest them. They might then reshare it. That's then going to a new audience again. So again, take the mindset of thinking about our own to just how, how can I engage um, uh, with others? Again, if it, the quality, if, if con uh, content is quality again your youth are actually going to feel more proud to share that i should have actually mentioned that when we're talking about the youth, um sharing it um tag location when you're putting your location uh for any anything that you do uh, for for example with us in chelmsford every single post has the location chelmsford because then it's gonna it's just gonna oh, um it's just gonna come up uh for, for other people in the area um when they're going on the um I forget the name of the page but like the reels page and everything else um so there's yeah there's a lot that you can start to do to um to start thinking about it not just yeah you not just sharing content that's going to your own people i get that that's a really good question and a really good point um because sometimes in most cases that's what's happening so yeah good point and good question thank you thank you uh andre was that comment crushing it in in a, oh there you go you just answered it okay Eddie, you asked a question on books. I think Andre's answered it there in the comment section, crushing it and start with why by Simon Sinek. Yeah, those are just two examples. Um, but truthfully, what I do when I'm looking at marketing, because um, I did the whole concept of an entrepreneur thing. So I started um, a company with a few um, colleagues of mine and I, I went through the same thing. What books can I use? Because I had no idea what I was doing. And I actually found the most useful thing for me was videos, webinars, TED Talks. So there are books out there, but I find that if you're an entrepreneur, you are going to be consuming a ridiculous amount of information. And books, once they're written, are great. Well, then times move on. We always say the thing in marketing that once you put live your marketing communications, it's now out of date. And so for me, I'd recommend take a look at those books, but definitely have a look online at webinars and follow prolific entrepreneurs. Look at what they do. So Gary Vaynerchuk was a guy who grew his agency, his marketing agency from nothing to 300 million. Um, global recognized speaker do, does all these talks and very, very interesting character. Um, he can be a hard listen to, a hard read at times, but he has so much insight. Uh, Simon Sinek's a great guy for thought process and mentalities of the way you need to be as a leader, which is a key part of being an entrepreneur is that tenacity. So um, you can find that. And I find all this stuff on LinkedIn. I genuinely find as being an entrepreneur or getting involved or learning in marketing, LinkedIn is one of the best resources I've come across. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions guys in the comments or you'd like to ask yourself, I think it's been very comprehensive tonight. Thank you, Andre, Nori, and Chisha. Excellent points. Is there one more question? Sam? Yeah. If a church wanted to link one of you guys just to get some advice, what would be the process? Adam's our agent. 
Cool. <laughs> so, so if you just link past me saying we need some marketing advice, we've gone to the conference. Um, there were some three, three, three young men that were doing something on marketing, and they, they can, they can, they can reach them out. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Yeah, um, I think we're all happy for our numbers and contacts to be shared. So yeah, on a serious note, if you did want to get in touch, yeah, just uh, message NEC Youth, or I'm sure Pastor, and we would be happy to to talk. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Excellent presentation. Really appreciate that. Um, preparation you guys put into putting it together and, and sharing your expertise with us here. Um, I don't really have. Yeah, it was excellent. Thank you. And um, the recording is going to go up online. So those of you who've um, been here tonight, you'll be able to watch it again and also share it with other people on the NEC Youth YouTube channel. Um, other people that maybe didn't, weren't able to make it tonight or you know other people in your team that would need to hear this as well so please do share um, the video once it gets uploaded um, tonight uh, so with that let's bow our heads for a word of prayer and then we'll we'll draw the meeting to a close father in heaven lord we thank you for the opportunity we've had to once again meet together i pray lord that you would bless each person who's been on this call and those that will watch afterwards and that the way we um, promote and share and uh, market um, our churches would be in a way that's appealing and would reach people outside of our um, our church bubble. We thank you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everyone. All, All right, right, guys. Thank you.